How's everyone doing? Good. So uh, they told me to do this uh, speech, and um, they put down as like a, a, a place marker for the title of the speech, State of the Union. I don't know who came up with that. And I think they were expecting that I was going to give them a new speech title. But I was thinking more and more about it. I was like, yeah, let's do a State of the Union. Let's do you know, what the President of the United States does every year about the uh, state of affairs, reading off of his teleprompter on behalf of the globalist cabal elites uh, to his 300 million plus enslaved people. Um, talk about a little bit about the state of affairs. It is interesting times, right, with uh, what's going on. I think everyone would agree that we are in interesting times. I think especially here in the US, which I don't spend a lot of time in on purpose uh, because it's just getting weirder and crazier all the time. I think a lot of people sense that too. And because of that, uh, you know, people are just sensing there's something going on. And, and there's a good reason to feel that way. Uh, this system that is currently in place in the US is completely out of control. <laughs> uh, it was already bad a long time ago, but now it's just, it's just gone insane now. Um, you know, starting off with just the founding of the US, that was just a takeover, of course, uh, from uh, some people who owned the people here in, from Britain. They took it over. They said, OK, we're going to own these people now. Uh, and then, of course, civil war, so-called civil war, uh, which was a fascist takeover uh, of numerous states by the fascist Abraham Lincoln. And it's no coincidence that the Lincoln Memorial, if you look at it in Washington, he has his two hands on giant fascies. Fascies are a bundle of sticks with a rope tied around them. It signifies strength and unity, nationalism, and that's exactly what happened back then. Uh, even till this day, it's amazing uh, how they still have these symbols everywhere. If you look in Congress, which is obviously the opposite of progress, Congress, uh, they uh, right behind them on both sides are fascists. So it's all hidden in plain sight what's going on. It's in the Colorado state flag, too. Well, talking about flags, you ever look at the US flag? Ever notice there's 50 pentagrams on that flag? Does anyone ever notice this? Uh, not to mention the bars, signifying sort of like a jail, prison, and then 50 pentagrams. Of course, where's the US military industrial complex headquartered out of, the largest terrorist organization in the world, uh, out of a building called the Pentagon, which is shaped like a pentagram. Uh, this is a very, and this has been going on for hundreds of years. This is how the entire country was set up, set up by Freemasons. Uh, the White House isn't called the White House because it's white. Uh, that was a Mason. Uh, the entire Washington District of Criminals is laid out uh, with all kinds of occult symbology. Even to this day, if you look on the back of a $1 bill, and most people don't notice this, uh, there's a pyramid there with an all-seeing eye. And no one seems to notice, no one seems to care. So we have this bizarre, and then of course, told that this is the land of the free, one of the least free countries in the world today, uh, in, in many ways. Not in every way, but in many ways. Uh, when I think about your average person's freedom uh, in many other countries, and I've been to about 100 countries, there's uh, only a couple I can think of that I would say might be worse than the US. Uh, Cuba, Venezuela currently, it didn't used to be that bad until Chavez, of course. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure North Korea is not great, but I haven't been there, so I can't say. And, and there's a reason I don't like to talk about places unless I've been there. And that's because everything we see on the television programming, and it's called programming for a reason, is not true. <laughs> and so it was really interesting for me this year to see with Donald Trump coming out and calling CNN fake news, which I've been calling it fake news for a, more than a decade, ever since I saw the Gulf War, you guys ever see the, the Gulf War uh, thing with um, the two reporters and they're in a green screen studio saying they were in uh, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia and putting on their gas masks and uh, so, you know, it's all fake. Um, so you can't trust anything you see on television, but when it comes to f freedom, the US is one of the least free countries in the world now. Uh, it, you can't do anything here anymore without the risk of being kidnapped. It's got the most uh, people of here in, in the world have been kidnapped. It's got the most amount of people in rape camps, concentration camps, prisons, uh, in the world today. Uh, the U.S. has 
5% of the world's population and 25% of the world's prison population. Uh, I don't know many Americans who haven't been in jail. And it's kind of funny because they tell you they live in the land of the free and everyone's in jail or on parole or, uh, and not to mention when they're not doing that, they're paying their 50% of taxes and that's, not in, that's just including income tax, not including the, there's gotta be thousands of other taxes now, right? Hotel tax, sales tax, cigarette tax, alcohol tax, capital gains tax, dividend tax, property tax. <laughs> what? Oh, you counted them. Wow. So two, there's 2,412 taxes, apparently. Yeah, that sounds about right. It's, I'm surprised, actually, it's that low, um, considering. And, uh, of course, here in the U.S., if you die, you get taxed as well. Um, <laughs> so, and if you try to commit suicide, that's also illegal, and they'll send you to a uh, rape camp if you try to do that. Well, they don't, not, might not necessarily do that, but it is illegal. It is illegal to try to kill yourself because you are not considered to be your own property here. You're considered to be the property of the United States. And I say state because it hasn't been United States since at least the fascist takeover by Abraham Lincoln. Uh, but it's never really been united uh, in any way because not every single person here has agreed to be a part of this union. Uh, I, I'm not from here, so I can't say I even had the choice. But I, I'm from Canada. I didn't agree to be a part of that government. I didn't agree to their taxes. Uh, or anything like that. So uh, we're getting just crazier and crazier now because this place has gone so out of control with all of its rules and regulations and taxes. And as I said, it's pretty much one of the least free countries in the world for that. I live in Mexico and uh, there's a reason I live there. It's because it's so much freer. Uh, there's just really no major rules or regulations or, or police that do anything. And if you do, you give them couple dollars and they go away. And I'd much prefer that than being kidnapped and roughed up and maced and all those sort of things that happen a lot here. I've actually been kidnapped numerous times. It's funny because I live in Mexico and a lot of people say, oh, isn't it dangerous? I'm like, I get kidnapped quite often when I go to the US. It's guys with blue outfits or black sometimes. Uh, but yeah, I get kidnapped uh, for just walking outside of a bar with a drink. I forget there's a rule about that here. Um, so we're really starting to uh, near the end of all of this. Uh, you look at the debt of the US government now, $20 trillion. It just passed, I believe, last week. And um, that does not include all the liabilities, all the money already spent by the government, which is things like socialist insecurity, or they call it social security, which is a Ponzi scheme by the dictionary definition of the word Ponzi, of paying out people uh, from new contributors coming into the system. Um, if you add up all of the debt and liabilities, this is all money already spent by the US government, and they can't really estimate it within $100 trillion. This is the area, the gray area, uh, because the last time the books of the US federal government were in any way adequately audited by an outside source or firm was 20 years ago. And uh, so it's estimated somewhere between 100 and $200 trillion is the current debt and liabilities of the US government. If you have a calculator that can even do numbers that large, just divide 200 trillion, or to be nice, just do 100 trillion divided by 300 million. I believe that works out to, I went to I was forced into government indoctrination camps as a child, so I'm not very good at math, but I believe it's about $250,000 for every person in the US. So man, woman, and child, and newborn babies, by the way, in the most heinous, tyrannical form of slavery ever, a newborn baby, if it's unfortunate enough to be born in the US SA today, as I call it, uh, will uh, be told it owes $250,000. Now, that obviously, none of this can get paid back, obviously. So that's going to be the really interesting part of all of this, is how this all plays out. And that's why we're very nearing the end right now, because you can't go much further. There's, uh, Dick Cheney once said that uh, debt doesn't matter. <laughs> now, I don't know about you guys. I've noticed debt matters in my life. Uh, most people do. 
there's usually some sort of repercussion. Someone's going to end up paying for it, and it's either the person who owes it or the person who holds the debt uh, is not going to get paid back. One way or the other, it always gets cleared. The market always clears. Dick Cheney had a reason for saying that because he obviously wanted to just keep spending as much as they could to give it to all his friends. That's all they ever do. But uh, there's obviously a limit. There's mathematical limits. This is just math. Uh, if you look at it right now, 20 trillion, which forget about all the money that's already been spent on socialist insecurity and Medicare and all that kind of stuff, that's, that's owed back to be paid in the future, but it's already been spent. Just forget about that and just go with the $20 trillion number. If the interest rate, and we can get into interest rates more in a second, but if that were to, if interest were to go to 10%, I'll make it an easy number, because again, I was indoctrinated as a child. Uh, I did receive my badge of obedience at the end, um, which no one has ever asked me for, uh, for anything in my life, so I'm not sure what that was all about. It's mostly just getting beat up every day, really. Um, but if you just do the math, $20 trillion divided by 10%, that's $2 trillion per year. That's almost the exact uh, total amount that the US government extorts its tax slaves for every single year. The total that the IRS uh, uh, terrorist organization, extortion agency, uh, takes in from extorting people every year is less than $3 trillion, I believe. So if interest rates were to go to 10%, which is not a historically big number at all. It's, in fact, that's, a, that's closer to the average in history. We live in special times right now, and I'll get into that in a second why we do. But if interest rates were just to go to 10%, the US government would be just spending all the money they take in from all their extortion just to pay the interest to the Rothschild Central Bank. So that's obviously, we're getting very, very close to the end of this now. So. The reason why we don't have uh, interest rates rising is, and we've been essentially near or at 0% for about eight years now, which is, again, historically unheard of. And you even have negative interest rates now, which boggles the mind that you pay someone to lend the money. That's exactly, and not to mention, it's not just someone, you're paying some vague criminal entity called a government that's absolutely bankrupt and you're paying them to lend them money. That's what you're doing in a place like Europe right now. The reason they're doing that is because almost all countries, especially in the West, but almost all countries are bankrupt. They're, they're absolutely, they're not much better than the US. In fact, some are even worse than the US, if you can believe that, in terms of total uh, percentage uh, debt to GDP. Japan's even worse than the US. It's like double. Uh, some are even uh, right around the US level. So they're all bad. So what they've decided is we got to keep interest rates down at 0% or even negative just to keep the system alive for a few more months or a few more years. Because if they didn't do that, if interest rates start to rise, even if it rose to 5%, that'd be half the budget of the US government going just to pay interest. People would start to catch on pretty quick that this system's over. And it is over, but most people just don't know it yet. That's the only thing. So we are nearing the end of the system. And it's good. It's a good thing that we're at near the end of the system. A lot of people, when I first started talking about this stuff, I write the dollar vigilante. I started in 2010. I said, within the decade, we'll likely see the dollar collapse and all fiat currencies collapse. Uh, we're still pretty much on track for that. Uh, it looks like about right. I might even be uh, sooner. And a lot of people say, well, you're very negative. Negative that a system that is based on Slavery, which is all government. Extortion, which is taxes, or theft, you can say. Uh, that mortgages, newborn children, and even unborn children for life into a system of slavery that robs, the po that robs your average person through the central banking system, which is a tenet of communism, for people who didn't know that. This is bad that this is going to go down? No, this is absolutely phenomenal. This is the best thing that could happen in the world right now. It would end the wars, which are only paid for by central banks, printing up money, which in the end impoverishes everyone else. Um, 
We would have peace and prosperity on earth like we've never known it if we didn't have government and central banks. Now, a lot of people have questions, what, what's the world going to look like uh, without that? And that's a good question. It's going to be very interesting. A lot of people have a lot of fear about that. Uh, it can't be any worse than it's been. <laughs> it can't. Uh, you have the entire world now being extorted. Everyone's a slave. Slavery did not go away 200 years ago. They just said, oh, now we'll just make everyone a slave. But we'll let them walk around more. Let them feel like they can go out, hey, look, I'm kind of free. And then, you know, drive five miles an hour too fast and get hit and kidnapped and raped. So this is phenomenal. It's going to go away. And, uh, but the, uh, the people who have been behind a lot of this stuff have a, a, a plan. Actually, it's my belief that they actually planned this collapse. Um, for a number of years, for decades actually. And the end goal, end game is to bring in even more tyrannical government and a one world government, one world central bank, one world currency that will be even worse than what we have today. And the reason it's worse is because you wouldn't be able to avoid it. So at least today with 250 tax farms in the world, you can at least choose one that might be a little bit better for you. You won't be quite as badly enslaved. But when it's all one, uh, it's, it'll be pretty tough to avoid unless you just want to go live in the woods, which actually I think is a pretty good idea. I'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, but it is a good thing it's going away. And their plan, like I said, is to actually do this. So their plan is to collapse it all. And then to make everyone so scared, this is what they do all the time. Fear is their own, only real weapon, uh, is to scare everyone into submitting, into giving up their freedom uh, for security, which I believe one of the founding fathers, which I hate that word, it sounds like so much like a cult. Does not anyone notice that? It's my founding fathers. Are you related to them? No? That's creepy, man. It's creepy. <laughs> It's like talking to someone from North Korea. It's like, oh, little Kim, or whatever his name is. He's our God and Savior. It's like, well, cool story, bro. Um, it's just creepy. But anyway, one of his, they have some good quotes. Some of the founding fathers believed a little bit in freedom, not a ton. A lot of them had slaves. I don't know if anyone ever noticed that. But uh, they, so they believed a little bit of freedom. And one of the quotes was that, uh, what was it? Don't give up security for, I don't even know. I, I butcher every quote I've ever tried to repeat. <laughs> but I, I think you know the one I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, that sounds better. Yeah, Benjamin Franklin, all right. See, I, I'm used to just having like Google in front of me. Don't need to memorize anything anymore. Um, so we'll, they've sort of been planning for this to happen, and they want to bring in this sort of new system, and, and they're on track for it. And you know, we, we could get into all the things they're doing. A lot of the stuff they're doing with, well, first of all, the wars, which is heinous, of course, uh, attacking these places like Libya and um, Afghanistan after doing the false flag attack of 9-11. Uh, Afghanistan, then they attacked Iraq under the false pretense of weapons of mass destruction, another massive crime against humanity. A million Iraqis dead, I believe. And still, George Bush goes out and throws out a baseball at a baseball game, and people clap for a you know, terrorist, you know, a criminal. Not to mention his dad will come out, and his dad was pretty much one of the people behind 9-11, and they'll cheer for that too. It's, it's pretty amazing. You know, it's so it's like being in an insane asylum here, <laughs> and it, the reason is like most people just don't know what's going on because they actually listen to what's on their television programming, and it's called programming for a reason. It's it's not true at all. It's and it's and it's done in a way to literally brainwash, and so you essentially have 300 million people here who's pretty brainwashed. So it's it's tough to be around them sometimes, uh, but you know, there's a lot of good people too, of course. But uh, that's the, the state of affairs. So one of the good things about all this is their plan is generally to have this collapse, and they want to bring in something tyrannical at the end of it. 
And they, they want to bring in this one world currency. Well, just like in every good movie, there's always some good guys. And it looks pretty hopeless at the beginning. Uh, but there's something about these guys. They've got a little spunk. They've got a little glimmer in their eye. They, they, uh, the, all the odds are against them. You know, it's, it's Luke Skywalker versus the, the entire empire. Uh, or Katniss from uh, Hunger Games against the capital. The empire, the capital. Ringing a bell, any, anyone here? Uh, and it's so funny, so many Americans will go. And not, it's not just Americans, Canadians, everyone. And so many people go to movies and um, cheer so much when Katniss takes down the evil government in the capital and helps the people in the, what do they call them, the sectors or districts? Yeah, right, yeah, districts, just like, in, yeah, they're not even trying to hide it, right? Um, <laughs> and they'll cheer and they'll cheer and they'll feel so good afterwards. That's actually on purpose too, because that's actually in the heart of men. There's not a lot of men left apparently, or I don't know, they've been so ground down from the 12 years of schooling, government schooling, uh, from the fluoride in the water, from the vaccines, from the television programming, uh, from having to work three jobs just to get by to pay all their taxes and trying to drive real slow so they don't get pulled over so they don't have to go to jail. A lot of, uh, a lot of the guys, and, you know, not to say that women aren't strong as well, but it's, it's usually the men who need to take action and there's not a lot of that left, and that's why they put that in those movies, is because that's still in a lot of the hearts of people, and that's why they feel so good when they watch those movies, and they cheer so much. And that they do that on purpose, because they, they, they let the people have that little release of, okay, that feeling I had inside, that feels better now, because we won in the movie. And then they drive real slow home, make sure they stop exactly at the stop sign. Uh, did we get our tax return filed in time? You know, I don't want to have any trouble. Um, and they just go back to their slavery and they don't even know they're slaves. So that's their, their goal is to bring in all this stuff. And as I said, just like, it's quite magical actually. I think if you want to get into talking about what life is, I think it is to some extent a 3D video game. Uh, but there's always uh, an underdog that comes out of nowhere and uh, can take down against all odds the incredibly powerful, well, actually not that powerful. It's, uh, most, most of it's an illusion. That's what a, a lot of those other movies are about too. Things like The Wizard of Oz with the man behind the curtain. It's all an illusion. Uh, th their strength is only based upon keeping people in fear and then trying to use that fear to get those people to give up their liberty. That's all they have, and it's all based on violence, it's all based on bad ideas, and all it really takes is good ideas to defeat them, but we're, we're going to start to see that. So we're nearing the end of this. We're going to see what happens, but interestingly enough, at the, at the very time of the last financial crisis in 2008, which was also engineered, it's all been engineered, even... The Great Depression in 1929 was all engineered by the Central Bank Federal Reserve. Right at the peak of the financial crisis where it looked like it was all going to fall apart and the entire system was going to collapse, and it will collapse, but uh, it didn't that time. It was very, very close, and it decided, okay, now we're going to print money until the whole system goes into hyperinflation and everything collapses. Out of the blue came a white paper from something, somebody that no one even knows who it is named Satoshi Nakamoto describing what the new free money system of the world could be. And it sounded crazy. And I remember actually, it's, it's really interesting to see what's going on right now. I was one of the first people, it was around 2011, and I said, this is gonna change the world. And so many people thought I was crazy. And that's changing dramatically. And uh, this is going to be very interesting now. So now we have things like Bitcoin, and that's spawned off a lot of other things, a lot of other cryptocurrencies, and a lot of blockchain-related things. Because really what the whole war is, is centralization from the top down. That's why they're so into pyramids. That's why there's a pyramid 
on the back of the $1 bill in the U.S. that no one seems to notice. We don't have any pyramids in the U.S. Like, why? And there's all seeing I on the top of it. That's because that's, that's their whole thing. It's top-down, centralized control by literally a few people over 7 billion people. That's what they want. The exact opposite of that is complete decentralization where nobody has control without consent over anyone else and people own themselves and can decide for themselves what they want to do with this gift of life, with this gift of free will. So that's the, the battle, that's the stakes and it's going quite well actually. <laughs> I've been quite amazed. Uh, I did not expect it to take off as quickly as it has in the last couple of years. And so we're going to see in the next couple of years. Now, the battle's just begun. Uh, they, they, the good thing about these uh, globalists, the people who are behind things like the central banks and own most governments, is they're not very creative. I don't know if they're even completely human, to be honest, truly. Uh, and this has been talked about even in the Bible, the Anunnaki and all these sort of things. There's a lot of folklore and a lot of uh, information that there's some sort of, was some sort of other species or alien something or something from another dimension. I don't know. But the, whoever they are, they don't seem very creative. So what they do is they live off our creativity because true humans, <laughs> especially if they live their truth and live as freely as they can possibly, are incredibly creative. Like look at all the beautiful things that humans have created, all the artwork, all the music. Uh, just the creativity of a day-to-day -day life, of a, a father you know, finding a way to get enough money to feed his kids that day. You know? Create, creative, ingenuitive, in general, that's, that's what humans are. They aren't like that, but they've learned how to scare us and how to corral us and how to fool us, trick us into Stealing the, the, the fruits of our labor, taxation and central banking, and using it against us, and that's what they've been doing. And they're literally stealing trillions and trillions of dollars. So they lose, they say they lose. Donald Rumsfeld is one example. On September 10th, 2001, I don't know if that date sounds familiar, was on, did a press conference and said the pentagram was missing. $2.3 trillion from the Department of Offense. Uh, and he said, this is, a, you know, people could die over this. The next day, the accounting department in the pentagram blew up. Uh, there's, you know, they don't have many security cameras at the Pentagon for some reason. It's not very secure. So no one's got a video of the plane hitting it, but there wasn't a plane that hit it, that's why. Um, but, so that's where it's at with uh, this battle. So they're going to be, I was actually surprised because the internet was the first sort of big deal. You know, it was the, the next big deal after the Gutenberg Press was the internet. Uh, the Gutenberg Press changed the world dramatically because for the first time information could be transferred from n not just your tribe or not just your local people it could go across the world. That was phenomenal, but it was just one way. It was one person who could get their information out there. You couldn't get your information back to him. That's what the internet changed. Now it's two-way. So I was around when the internet came out, and uh, it was around 1994, 1993 when I heard about it. And within a few years, I wasn't even, I didn't know 1% of what I know today. I didn't even know what the word anarchy meant, or statist, or any of these sort of things. But I said, I can't believe the government hasn't figured out this is going to be a big problem for them. And this was like 96, 97. I kept waiting. I'm like, man, when are they going to figure out that this is going to be like so bad, that all the stuff they do? Like, I, I said back then, I said, there's, there's not going to be any more wars because you can't have wars without propaganda. You can't, you can't have 100 million people over there who've never met <laughs> 100 million people over there and somehow get them to just want to kill each other. It just does not happen. Uh, unless you can use tons of propaganda and say, oh, they're, they're really bad. Look, look what they did uh, on 9-11, blah, blah, blah. Reichstag fire, all that kind of stuff. So they're not, they're, 
they were really slow to catch on the internet. It was, it was really like, it was Bill Clinton and then uh, he just started to say, we better start censoring this or something. And, and Donald Trump still talks about that all the time. And they talk about the internet kill switch still. Uh, but, but the people, and, and people like, by the way, Bill Clinton and all these other guys, these aren't the guys who run things. I'm not saying they're, they're the guys who run things. They're like the puppets uh, for the people who really run things. But they don't seem to be all that quick on realizing threats. Um, I think it's because they're not very creative. The, like, I think they're very animal-minded. Uh, all fear, all violence, um, no creativity. And that's all they really know how to do. Like, what does a government do? A government, well, the word govern, govern to control, meant, I live in Mexico, mente, mind, mind control. That's all it is. It's an illusion. It doesn't even really exist. That's the crazy part about government, is it doesn't actually really exist. Where does government exist? If you ask anyone, what is government, they'll be like, uh, the White House. It's like, well, that's a building. Congress, that's another building with about 200 useless people inside it. Uh, what is it, though? It's basically, it's mind control. It's, it's an a, a illusion in people's mind that they are, these people have some sort of authority over them. I think that's kind of the weakness of the human species to an extent is it's quite uh, naive, quite gullible, quite disbelieving that someone could be that evil. But uh, that's, what, that's how they can take control of us. And th there's, for whatever reason, they, they just started catching on to the internet just recently. It's just really just now happening. So now we're seeing the Google AdWords, the uh, Adpocalypse, all these kind of things. They're finally realizing <laughs> They better stop this information from being out there. Uh, even Donald Trump, after the most recent, what was probably a false flag, I didn't even look into it in the UK, uh, said, we better turn off the internet. It wasn't that his quote. It was like, I saw it. It was like, we better must cut, it off. Must cut off the internet. Yeah. <laughs> no one seemed to even, they're all on their phones on the internet and not even listening. <laughs> That's fine. Sounds fine. So they're just now catching on the internet. What they haven't caught on to yet is blockchain and cryptocurrency and things like Bitcoin. They're catching on faster because when you hit at money, that is the source of most of their power. It was the Roth, uh, I forget which Rothschild, the, the first major one, Jacob, I think, uh, who said that I care not who makes the laws or who, who sits on the throne in England, I, I care uh, who controls the money, and I control the money. That was his quote. And that's how they do control all these things. If you control money, you can control the world to a great extent. And that's what they've been doing with their central banking fraud. And it is actually a tenet of communism. And actually, at the highest levels, they want the whole world to be communist. And it's not because they believe that communism helps the, the little man. They know it creates complete, utter destruction, and they love that. And they can sit on top of it and just siphon all the wealth and have control over everyone. In fact, it's not even about money to them, in my opinion, from what I've looked into. it, It's more about control. And I think a lot of them, in some ways, they're very scared of us. Uh, and that, I think that's why they, they just keep doing all this stuff. It's sort of like you know, a sociopath, a psychopath, uh, or even like a, you know, an alcoholic. Uh, beating a, a husband. Um, you know, a lot of stuff comes out of fear uh, for whatever reason. There's a lot of psychological aspects to it. But they're, they're just catching on to this is a big problem to them now. And they're just starting to figure out that it's really hard to turn off Bitcoin. It's really hard to turn off these things. There's really only one or two ways. Uh, turn off the power to everyone and or turn off the internet. You could turn off the internet, I guess, is one option. Then the bigger option is turn off the power. Turning off the internet isn't that easy uh, because it's so decentralized in so many ways. It's parts of it are centralized, but you can have mesh networks fairly easily, uh, that sort of thing. Turning off the power is a little easier, but it's, it's not that hard to turn it all off. But they are considering it. Um, so we will see what happens in the next few years. This, you know, I don't know why people even go to the movies. Like, this is so interesting. Like, I, that's, there's two reasons I can't watch movies. One is, 
life is way more interesting than anything I've ever seen on a screen or in a book. Uh, and secondly, there's so much propaganda and I can't stand it. Uh, it's just always the your president saved us again. Oh, the good cops all the time, good cops. Um, but no, we're, we're, this, is, uh, this is the battle right now. And it's the battle between the people who want to control everybody and there's the other side, and I'm on that side, which is the people who don't want to control you at all, want to let you decide what to do with your own life. And we're the bad ones, of course. Um, I, I guess what's the latest one this week? That uh, the reason why Bitcoin's bad is because if you use Bitcoin, you're, you're uh, financing North Korea. Is that what they had this week? <laughs> but yeah, so th this is the battle. Uh, when I first started the dollar vigilante, a lot of people said to me, OK, so you think the US dollar is going to collapse in the next 10 years? The fiat currency is going to collapse in the next 10 years. Uh, what's going to take its place? And this was the, I was asked this in 2010. And I said, I don't know, but I'm sure the market will come up with something. One year later, in 2011, someone told me about Bitcoin. And as soon as I heard that beep on my computer when I received <laughs> my first Bitcoin, my eyes opened up. And I said, it's here. It's already here. And it was already there in 2009. I just didn't know about it. So you know, Bitcoin is just the beginning. Now, there's other ways we could get technical on other ways you could destroy Bitcoin, uh, quantum computing and all these sort of things. But that's just going to be an ongoing battle uh, to you know, one side versus the other to keep advancing. And that's fine. That's the way the market always is. But they want to control everything. They want to control the money. And they can't control things like Bitcoin. And, and then, of course, there's even things like Nexus. And, and that's really the next step. And I can't say I've looked into Nexus a lot. I got invited to this conference a few weeks ago. Uh, I saw a lot of great people, including Doug Casey, were on the list, and Ron Paul, who I also really uh, respect, Judge Napolitano as well. And I thought, OK, I'll go to it. But I haven't looked into it too much. But I understand it's essentially decentralizing the internet, which I've said for quite a while, that's the next step. If we can get to that step, it's over for them. Uh, because there'd just be nowhere to turn off. Uh, and ideas are amazing because if once ideas are out there and once people understand those ideas, you can't make them not understand that anymore. That's why ideas are so powerful. And that's why it's so important to the world controllers to make sure that people don't get access to those ideas. And certainly if they do, that they also don't get access to a money that they can individually control and own and essentially be their own bank. That's the death knell to uh, these controllers. If they lose control of money and they lose control of information, it's over. Barack Obama will have to go get a janitor job or something. Uh, all these guys will have to just filter back into society and hope no one remembers what they did. Uh, some of them will probably get hung. And I won't have any tears, but I'm, I'm not going to be the one ha hanging them. But uh, you know, in many ways, they do deserve it. But it's not really about that. It's not about, uh, there's no, there's, it's quite interesting as well. This does not need to be a violent revolution. Bitcoin has already almost destroyed the central banking system. And Bitcoin is just numbers. It's just math. It's beautiful. And the governments and the people who control it, they only know one way to control things, and that's violence. And what was it? It was, uh, I don't know if it was Bitcoin related, but it was something about computers. And the government didn't want the information out. And it was in the UK. And it was at a newspaper office. And the government SWAT team came in and started like shooting the computers and stomping them. Because they thought, and like people were just watching them and going, you never heard of the cloud? <laughs> but the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they probably would. Not, not the brightest. Order followers aren't the brightest. But uh, yeah, that's where we're at. So it's, you know, it's quite amazing that 99.9999% of people in the world today have no idea this evolution is going on. And I don't say revolution because we're not revolving back to anywhere. This is going to be the next step for humanity, is getting out of this incredibly. We're, we will look back. We might even in our lifetimes look back at this period of time and think, how did that ever occur? How were people using pieces of paper that just had pictures of dead people printed on them as money. 
How were they accepting that? And how were hundreds of millions of people dying in wars that they didn't even want to be in? That they didn't even have, they didn't even know what they're, why they were even fighting it. Like there was some sort of sickness that came over the world in the last few hundred years. And I think Ron Paul had it quite right when he said the 20th century, it's, it's no coincidence that the 20th century was a century of total war, it's also the century of central banking. So that's why if we can get rid of central banking, which Bitcoin quite easily dismisses, we can have peace and prosperity on Earth like we've never known it. Now how it all happens is gonna be interesting and the transition could get messy, could be interesting, it also could be great. And what I've learned is you can't control what's gonna happen in the world and really to get into yourself uh, really, concentrate on yourself. That saying that you, know, that you change the world around you, each of us individually actually do. And you can do it by just being physically better. Once you're physically better, your mind starts working better. Once your mind starts working better, you can, you can connect more, your consciousness starts rising. Get more, a little bit more, I don't wanna say spiritual so much, but like consciously aware of the bigger picture. And as you do that, other people around you see that, and it changes the world. That's really how we change the world. When I first started off, like 10 years ago, I thought, oh, we gotta fight the government, we gotta fight the central banks. No, Bitcoin's not fighting central banks, Bitcoin's just math, and it's going to do away with central banking. And we don't need to fight the government to get rid of them, we just create new systems to make their old government systems obsolete, which we're doing in every single way. And a lot of them are blockchain related. So I think I'm out of time. I don't know if there's questions and answers, or I think I have a minute if, go ahead. Uh, so I'm just wondering, um, China, you know, just banned their exchanges, and so I'm wondering if you feel like if the US were to ban their exchanges and every country would ban all their exchanges, if decentralized exchanges would be an answer, and if not, how do you play the future house? Yeah, well, decentralized exchanges are definitely going to be the solution to all this. Um, one of the things that a lot of people who are very against Bitcoin say, is what if all the governments, as you say, make it illegal? Well, first of all, you can't make Bitcoin illegal. It's just math. Uh, Bitcoin don't care about your laws. Bitcoin not, isn't scared about your jail sentences. What you can do is scare the uh, tax slaves um, in your geographic region into not wanting to use it. If it gets to that point, I think we'll see a lot of people starting to wake up. See, every, they, the reason why they can't win in the end is because everything they do that tries to keep more control wakes more people up, right? So we're really en nearing the end point where I think uh, Doug Casey actually said this, the, or uh, it might not have been Doug, but I think it was you, Doug. This, uh, well, I heard it from you. Said that the mask is starting to come off government. Government is just violence. Government is extortion and slavery. That's all it is. But they can keep a nice little face on every now and then for a little while. But once it goes bankrupt, like it is today in the US and many other countries, they're gonna to have to get more and more tyrannical and that's sort of what this whole Donald Trump thing is, bringing in a bigger police state now, um, just to keep control. But as I said, as they try to keep control by becoming more tyrannical, another million anarchists are born that day. So it's gonna be a very interesting time. So I don't know who's running this show or if I'm supposed to leave. Is there another speaker? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thanks.